morning, everyone. March 23rd, week two of homeschool. So I hope this week goes even better than last week and that we've all kind of hit our groove and are kind of settling into our new routines and everything. So it's nice to see you all. I do have some happiness posts that have still been coming in. Send them in. You send it to me, I will read it. All right, so you'll remember last time I did these, Mark told me about his new truck, but it didn't have the picture. So let me refresh your memory. Mark said this new truck makes him so happy. It is so cool because it has a clock and is also a bank. It's super cool because it opens up with my very own secret code. So here is Mark with his Well, that is a nifty truck. truck. I wish I had that. I know. Can it's you buy that for Christmas for me? Well, I can look. Okay. All right, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, Mrs. Robertson. Hi, Mrs. Zigre. Smiles make me happy, and your smile is one of the warmest I know. Thanks for all you do. Hi, Mrs. Robertson. It's nice to see you also. I miss you and Mrs. Drum. We have such an awesome team in kindergarten. There's just under 50 kids, for those of you that don't know. Roughly 24 in each class. Roughly, I think KA maybe has 26. Doesn't matter. Um, but even though we're two separate classes, we do a lot of things together. So it's nice for all these kids. They have all these mommies. Mr. Matisse is there too. He's there to help. We have lots of grown-ups there to help. So it's awesome. So thank you, Mrs. Robertson. Jocelyn, what makes me happy? Mrs. Zigre makes me happy. My family makes me happy and my baby dolls make me happy. I make myself happy when I sleep in my own room. Millie. Millie sent me a video and it was so nice to see her smiling face. Her blankie makes her happy. All right. This is from Annabelle, Ava, and their mom had a great idea on here, so I'm going to pass that on. This is from Annabelle. My new loft bed makes me happy. So do turtles, unicorns, and macaroni and cheese. My mommy, daddy, and sissy make me happy. I am so happy to be able to see you. This is her big sister, Ava. This is Annabelle's big sister, Ava. The things that make me happy are food, my mom and dad, and walruses. Thank you for sending videos to my sister's class. She loves to see you. We had walrus in Pictionary last night. We mine did was, have Mine was amazing, if you recall. As a side note, we played Pictionary as a family. Mr. Zigre is the worst drunk. Literally the worst. He and Jackson, unfortunately, was his partner. And Jackson tried, Mr. Zigre drew the guitar, the most detailed guitar. The strings, the neck, and Jackson's like, guitar, guitar! And Mr. Zigre's like, no, it's instrument. Well, then perhaps draw another instrument with the guitar. Yeah. Whatever. So Dylan and I were awesome partners. Yeah, we creamed them. So he drew this weird looking object. And he put these two little kind of hairy tusks down. And I'm like, it's obvious, so obviously a walrus. And Mr. Zigre says that I have a bad advantage because I'm used to what kindergartners draw all day, <clears throat> which is kind of an insult to Dylan's drawing skills now that I think of it. But it was fun. All right. So we did Ava. All right. Now, the DeRochers family... They are making cards and writing letters for some friends, elderly family members who are in nursing homes since they can't have visitors. I love that idea. That's a great idea. Yes, I thought so too. Jillian. My family makes me happy, my blanket, and my stuffed animals. Carla. The things that make me happy are my friends and family. Tessa. So what makes me happy is my friends, my family, my teachers, my pets, and my Fiona stuffed animal. All right, this one is from the Cerny family, Juliana Cerny in particular. So she said, what makes JJ happy is army men, and for Mara is princesses, and for my dad is sonic boom, haha, -ha. and for me, my family, which is sweet, Juliana. Then she sent me another email and said, for her mom, a hot cup of coffee makes her Absolutely. happy. Absolutely. And she added 49 exclamation points after that. So, whew. Did you count all those? I did. Okay. I did. 
So we know how, boy, if you see Mrs. Cerny before the coffee and after, man. Same with me at home. It's true. It's quite a transformation. Okay. So today's National Puppy Day. So you've seen a little bit of Roxy and we're just going to touch on it real briefly. Uh, so Jackson, he asked for a dog every day for seven years. So when he turned 10, I finally said, okay, fine, we'll get you a dog. So we went to the Friendship Animal Clinic shelter. Friendship a APL in Elyria. Friendship yeah. APL in Elyria. Um, and picked her from all the other rescue dogs. And she was 20 pounds overweight. Okay. They told us she was part Basset, part Beagle. Okay, fine. So I bring her home. We put her on a green bean diet. We give her loads of walks, which my family was thrilled. She loses 20 pounds, right? Just like that, like six months. It did, right. Turns out she's all beagle. There was no basset hound in there. It's just that her belly was so low. That's why her legs looked this big. So she went in 2013, she went to puppy prom, don't you know? Every so often she would have to go to day camp if I couldn't be home to feed her. So here's Roxy at Puppy Prom. She looks the same now, even though back then she was younger. She does. All right, and then if you'll pan over, Jackson is here chilling on the couch. So he'll, I'm sure, give you a wave when Dylan pans around. And then we have put Roxy's Halloween costume on. You can tell she's thrilled. Yeah, she looks very enthused. It's a... Uh... Yeah, there she is. She's like, why are you filming me? Okay. All right. One more quick thing. Dylan and his girlfriend made these cookies. They are banana chocolate oatmeal. So definitely the chocolate has discounted any healthiness you might have gotten from the banana. You're welcome. So I'll put those in the email that I'm sending out today. Stay tuned for the book. All right. Dinosaurs Before Dark. Chapter six, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Catching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted, but Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie? Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. All right, there's your picture. That is a lot of dinosaurs in it. Yes. Wow. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering over Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. The dinosaur has arms? Okay. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me, slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled towards Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther up the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head, pretend to chew. Chew? Yes. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. 
Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. So I'm wondering, you two sitting here, was it the mommy dinosaur angry because they thought that she was they were getting too close to the eggs? I, I think that's it. a good inference. Thank you. Yeah. We know as much as you do. Thank you. Jackson's not at Heinen's today, you'll see. He's graced us with his presence. <laughs> you have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. That is true. Annie stood up. Annie, too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. Oh boy, I'm never gonna pronounce this correct. Okay, the Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. All right, there's a lot happening in this picture. You see the dinosaur running away. You see Annie, I think, crouched down. You see Jack. Lots to take in. A lot, of, lot to take in. Yes. Yeah. All right. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs, two big legs, and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. What do you think it's going to be, Jackson? A turtle. He had a huge head, and his jaws were wide open. Any guesses, Dylan? I'm going to go for the turtle, too. Okay. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, we were close. Start with the teeth. Whisper Jack. That's the end of the chapter. I forgot to mention that it's spirit day today. So I hope you're wearing your school spirit clothes at home. All right. See you tomorrow.